All right. Uh, video number three, uh, Sherbert says the slogan of the organization is, she's talking about in reference to this video, which I made a while back, Anonymous Guy Fox. And uh, briefly, uh, what I do is I connect the dots from uh, QAnon of today. From Ten years ago, the group called Anonymous, which stems all the way back to Guy Fox of 1605. And if you're not familiar, Guy Fox was a Roman Catholic Jesuit who tried to kill King James because the Roman Catholic Church did not like King James commissioning 54 of the greatest scholars of that time to translate the Bible perfectly into the English language. So the Roman Catholic Church tried to kill King James and they caught him. And that was on November 5th, 1960, or I'm sorry, 1605, right? And so every year, in England, they have this thing where it's uh, remember, remember the 5th of November. All right. So anyways, uh, the, you know, these guys are very deceptive. And so let's see what she has to say. She says, we are legion. We do not forgive. This is the slogan of this organization. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. We all know legion is the name of the demon gave to Jesus in Mark Five verse nine, and she's right about that. Of course, uh, yeah, there we go. So, and he asked him, "What is thy name?" And he answered, saying, "My name is Legion, for we are many." And also, Jesus Christ tells us in Mark eleven verse twenty six, "But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses." They plainly tell you who they are. So. This um, this slogan is, we do not forgive, right? And that's contrary to what Jesus says. So that's a great point, Sherry Baron. So this is what I've used a lot, right? Um, because I've, uh, you know, I'm probably like the rest of you. I have come across people who have done me wrong. They've said bad things about me. They've done me wrong in a number of different ways. And so I have to forgive them, Right. And uh, so oftentimes people will get mad at you, not because of what you what you did, but because of what's going on in their life. And so no matter what the reason is, we've got to forgive them because uh, if we don't forgive others for their sins against us, why would the Father in heaven forgive you for your sins against him? Right. So we got to keep that in perspective Got to keep that in mind. And I've. I've used that uh, a lot of times because it, it can be very difficult to forgive people when they do you wrong. And uh, oftentimes uh, people will do you wrong for what seems no reason at all. Uh, not always, obviously. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, you do them wrong and they try to get back at you or whatever and so on and so forth. But no matter what the reason, we got to forgive others. Uh, and... Uh, the Bible is very clear about that, and Sherpa makes a great point regarding that. I appreciate that very much. So, um, I was going to show you some videos of this, but I can't. So, I'm just going to show you some of the images. And today's really the first day I've looked at the images, and I don't know. You know, it looks like fireworks to me, but uh, I don't know what the conflict is. I really don't. Uh, <laughs> It, it's uh, it's interesting though because the, the, there's sort of a lull in the news. You know, people are getting tired of the vaccine and you know tired of the coronavirus and and there's no more you know riots in Minneapolis and so on and so forth. So we got we got to come up with some new news. I think this is all propaganda. That's what I think. The whole thing, killing people, just to create a distraction in the world. That's what I think. And it's interesting. I think this is related to what we read about in Mark 13, uh, in Matthew 24, in Luke 21, where uh, Jesus talks about the abomination of desolation. And he says, get out of Judea, flee to the mountains, get out, don't go back, just get out, right? And I think this is, you know, like I said, directly related to 1948 Israel. I, I'm not, you know, 100% on that, but it just seems to me... Like you've got Jews and Muslims there 
Well, where are the Christians? This is the birthplace of Jesus Christ, and there are no Christians? Come on, man. What's going on? Well, Jesus tells us what's going on. All right? There, this place is desolate of Christians, and he's telling you, get out. You know, the Israelis are not God's people, and the Muslims are not God's people. Those people that believe in Jesus Christ are God's people. Those Jews over there, they reject Jesus Christ. They are not God's people. So I want to share uh, something here. I don't want to. I want to try to avoid uh, disclosing his name. But if you're real, if you're real smart, you figure it out. Is but he makes a declaration of faith. He says we must support Israel. Genesis 12, verse three. So what's Genesis 12, verse three say? And it says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse thee that curse you, or whatever. Curse him that curse thee. Right. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, is this talking about 1948 Israel? You know when this was made? This was long before 1948 Israel. All right. So I'm just kind of, this stuff kind of drives me nuts. It kind of gets me fired up because... Why are you supporting? What's he say? Wait a second. What's he say? We must support people that fully reject Jesus Christ. What are you talking about, man? We got to support these people because they were born of the same flesh and blood that we're born with. It makes no sense at all. These people full on reject Jesus Christ. We got to support them? Says who? Where are you getting that at? Come on. All right. Yeah, I'm fired up. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, it, I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not prepared for this. But let's let's see what Paul says in Romans nine. Not as though the word of God has taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So this is long before 1948 Israel as well. So what's he talking about? I mean, how, in your worldview, how do you explain that? For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So is it, is it a physical Israel or is it a spiritual Israel? And of course, Israel represents God's holy people, which is the Christian. And, oh, you know, I mean, come on. What's it say? Oh, I... I'm not going to find it for what's that what's that verse in Romans 2 28 and 29 I can't remember nothing all right so it says here for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit not in the letter whose praise is not a man but of God this is clearly saying people are not just born God's people because they just were born and they and they happen to be born in a certain area of the earth I mean come on man it's never been like that even when they they exited when the Hebrew people exited out of Egypt they were not all Hebrews all right and then uh, of course in uh, like so revelation 2 9 revelation 3 9 um, God knows God knows full well who is his people and who is not, right? So in Revelation 3, 9, uh, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee and not them. God loves us and not the, the Christ-rejecting Jews, And if it just, it's incredible to me, and I wish I could, I'd spend all day on this, uh, talking about the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God and are contrary to all men. And then, of course, I'm not surprised when you scroll down a little bit further and you see him using a Jewish name to refer to Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashariach is a, it comes from the Jews who reject Jesus Christ. He's he's giving credit to Jews who reject Jesus Christ for a name that is not Jesus Christ. Anyways, 